NASA mission may prove Venus was once habitable. In the recent decades, Venus hasn't gotten much attention outside the psychology field with the 1992 book titled, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. But that was written by a relationship counselor and had nothing to do with astronomy or any aspect of the cosmos. But finally, scientists applaud the decade of Venus as three new missions to the planet known as the Evening Star will commence soon. The second rock from the sun is now back in the limelight, regaining overdue attention. Now, Venus scientists are extremely enthusiastic about NASA and its European counterpart, ESA, committing to three new missions set to launch in the early 2030s. Stay tuned in and learn how these upcoming NASA missions might prove that Venus was actually once habitable. Earth and Venus are actually uncannily similar in size for two planets that differ so greatly in present-day habitability. You'd think that there would have been extensive research in our neighbor, including a close watch with satellites and even Venus rover landing attempts. But NASA's last robotic Venus visitor ended its mission in 1994, and for decades, the Venus community has been rallying for more Venus missions. To this day, there is only one spacecraft dedicated to studying the evening star. For planetary scientists who focus on Venus, the celebration began after the 2022 Lunar and Planetary Science Conference, which was held in Texas in early March. Jorn Helbert, a planetary scientist at the German space agency called DLR, was quoted saying, I would just like to take a moment to acknowledge how fantastic it is that we've actually moved now from talking about what proposed Venus missions could do to actually talking about what our missions will do at Venus. This is just an incredible moment, and indeed, it is a triumphant moment. NASA has committed to two new Venus missions. Their code names are Veritas and Da Vinci. As for NASA's European counterpart space agency, ESA, they've also given the green light for a Venus mission that they've dubbed the Envision. There's another 8 through 10, however, as all three missions are expected to conduct the bulk of their observations in the early 2030s. Yet the eagerness is not in vain, as these missions are designed to revolutionize scientific study of the planet also known as the Morning Star. During the celebration of the green light for Venus missions, Martha Gilmore, a planetary geologist at Wesleyan University in Connecticut, was quoted eagerly announcing, the Venus community, we are tight. We've been battling this whole time and proposing. So, the celebration continued because the Decade of Venus is virtually here. The struggle to finally get these Venus missions approved was a long and tedious endeavor. Even with a decades-long gap in NASA missions, neither Veritas nor Da Vinci was a first-time proposal. So every time another mission was chosen over the Venus missions, it only allowed scientists to sharpen their designs and try again. Still, Venus boosters have struggled to keep convincing scientists to dedicate their careers to a planet with such a dearth of missions. During the Lunar and Planetary Science Conference, Gilmore referenced her first appearance to the conference in 1992, which was during NASA's last era of Venus spacecraft. She noted that the program included three full days of Venus talks. Now after decades, although Venus hasn't returned to the spotlight like it used to be, great strides have been made as presentations about the planet known as the Evening Star filled the conference schedule. Minutes of the meeting pertain to topics about strange geological features on Venus, Venus's long-lost oceans, and the strange cloud activity. The principal investigator of Veritas, Sue Smrecker, who is also a planetary scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California, gave an inspiring speech on the introduction to the mission she first proposed to the agency in 2015. Veritas, which is expected to launch in 2027, is tailored to stare through the planet's thick clouds and give scientists their first glimpse of the Venusian surface since the end of NASA's Magellan mission in 1994. Moreover, the spacecraft's instruments will provide data about rock composition, geologic activity, and the planet's interior. During her speech, Smrecker said, Veritas will produce these incredible foundational datasets that will just tell us so much about Venus and pave the way for the decade of Venus and all the exciting investigations that are going to be discussed today and hopefully many, many future missions. One of the instruments aboard Veritas that scientists and engineers are ecstatic about is the Venus Emissivity Mapper. This instrument comes with a twin that will be strapped on ESA's mission and vision. After its targeting launch in the early 2030s, both spacecrafts will arrive simultaneously, and the pair of instruments will complement each other, just like twins normally do. 
since Venus is one of the only inner planets where rock types have not been mapped across the full surface, the instruments on the Veritas and Envision will engage in this task. On top of that, these instruments have a main mission to identify whether Venus's surface hosts any active lava flows. Features like lava flow would normally glow compared to cooler rock nearby and give clouds above an eerie shine. But keep in mind, the Decade of Venus missions are actually a collaboration of three, or a trio of Venus missions. While the strength of Veritas and Envision science focuses on the planet's surface, Da Vinci's observations will concentrate on Venus's thick, carbon-rich atmosphere. Unlike the other two missions, Da Vinci, which is targeting launch in 2030, includes two components, a main spacecraft and an atmospheric probe that will spend about an hour coasting down to the surface to gather the vital data. Da Vinci's probe has a very difficult mission, as it will land in a particularly complex area called Alpha Regio, which is extraordinarily rugged and highly deformed. Alpha Regio is filled with volcanoes, where each can average about 25 kilometers, or 15 miles in diameter, and about 750 meters, or about half a mile high. According to graduate student Margaret Dean, who was working with Gilmore at Wesleyan University, the Alpha Regio region is filled with intimidating landscape, including webs of ridges, troughs, and other perilous features. Also, in a grand celebration over the Venus community's sudden wealth of missions, Dean said that their team has received two lucky breaks. One big break was the September 2020 announcement of phosphine detected in Venus's atmosphere. On Earth, the chemical is associated with life, and the detection ignited a flame of renewed interest in the planet's habitability. She went on to explain that the other celestial being came in the form of the cross-disciplinary partnerships formed with exoplanet scientists in recent years because the number of known alien worlds has skyrocketed. In the last decade, thousands of exoplanets have been discovered. The first data points scientists typically gather about an exoplanet are its size and its orbital distance from a star. By those criteria alone, Earth and Venus look essentially the same, and many exoplanets look more or less like Venus. So the joint efforts of exoplanet scientists and the Venus community are largely anticipating to reveal some amazing discoveries. When speaking on the matter, lead scientist Gilmore said, Exoplanets, who knew? They're everywhere, and a lot of them are Venus size. The exoplanet folks and the Venus folks have become like BFFs, because we're trying to understand how an Earth-sized planet happens. Exoplanet scientists and the Venus community all understand that it's already extremely difficult getting a spacecraft to Venus or Mars. So, sending an expedition to exoplanets is currently virtually impossible. So the scientists have decided not to go chasing waterfalls. At the Lunar and Planetary Science Conference, Stephen Kane, an astronomer at the University of California, Riverside, said during his presentation, this is a rather haunting thing to think about. So instead of allocating billions of dollars in studies and space tech to target exoplanets, scientists who are interested in rocky and potentially habitable worlds figure it's much wiser to simply look at planets in our own solar system. And since Venus has a massive atmosphere, Plus, it's virtually the same size as Earth. It's NASA's new hotspot of study, an obviously perfect reference point. So, with NASA announcing that two missions to the morning star that are set to blast off as early as this decade, and the European Space Agency set to pilot a mission as well, Venus scientists are so excited, their celebration might last for months. Gilmore told the audience at the Lunar and Planetary Science Conference that she is changing her license plate to read, To Venus. Gilmore went on to say, there's so much that we can do with this opportunity to go to Venus. We are all invested, I think, in learning everything we can with this opportunity. And it is truly a grand opportunity, since humans have not sent a probe to Venus since the Soviet Union carried out two missions in 1985. So now you understand why 2020 is the return of the Decade of Venus. This is another great leap for mankind. What are your expectations regarding the Decade of Venus? We value your opinion, so make your voice heard by leaving your thoughts in the comments section below. For more vital information on the vastness of space, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to Space Infinity.